Hello Internet. If you haven't checked out my blog article, this video is a companion to that, and I've got the link down in the description. The first big surprise I came across, closing the case back with the crown in actually increased the pressure inside the case as much as half a PSI. So the case back and the gasket work as a diaphragm when it's threaded closed to actually squeeze the atmosphere inside the watch case. So, so just closing up the case increased the pressure a significant amount. Uh, now our temperature is still falling because I was cooling this off earlier. Uh, but this is interesting. So I'll now prove that I pressurized the case uh, be when I undo the crown. So if I undo the crown, I'll let atmosphere come back into the watch. And so let's see that. And so undo the crown and pop. The crown is out. And now 14.4, our atmosphere is allowed back into the case. And you'll see this fall all the way back to around 14.4 PSI. The other thing to note is the temperature is rising as the board heats up, as the battery warms up the board. Now I tried to cool it off so it wouldn't be that significant, but uh, here we are. Uh, you see that rise in temperature. So as the board starts to warm up, now this is just, uh, this big dip is just between 87 and 86, so this is almost a flat line. <clears throat> so this is just dramatic because of the way this is scaled. It's auto scaling to make it easier for you to guys to see at home, uh, but just keep that in mind. So the board right now is at 87 degrees. Now as that warms up, it will actually increase the pressure inside the watch. Don't think temperature and pressure have any effect on the inside of your watch? Well, I was actually stunned to learn that uh, temperature has a big effect on the pressure inside your watch. So here <clears throat> we're at about 14.5, 14.45 PSI. So a little bit more than atmosphere pressure from when I screwed in the crown. It's rising slowly as the temperature is going up inside the watch case. Okay see that kind of auto scale and then this will match temperature and pressure will match because as the inside of this watch gets heated up it will increase the air molecules will expand and it will increase the pressure inside the sealed container because you have a you know, sealed back sealed gasket okay so pressure and temperature will continue to rise now what if we were to stop that let's say get a bucket of ice water and Make sure our crown is closed and drop the watch into the bucket of ice water. Immediately, pressure starts to plummet. So 14.54, now down to 14.4, continuing to drop 14.3, and 2. <clears throat> so the watch case itself, the air inside the watch case, had 14.4 psi of pressure inside the atmospheric pressure. Changing the external temperature to ice water makes the air inside that sealed container become a vacuum. So we're down to 13.9 psi. This will continue falling. I've seen pressure swings of 3, 4 PSI from in the freezer to 90 degrees.
Let's go deep sea diving. I have a pressure vessel here. It is rated to 150 PSI, excuse me, 125 PSI. I'm only going to put 100 PSI in it uh, underneath the uh, safety rating. So only going to put 100 PSI, well, 100 PSI, um, 90 meters of water, under 90 meters of water. So this is simulating diving deeper than any recreational diver can go. So we leveled off about 13.7 PSI by cooling the case. We have now taken the launch and simulated diving 90 meters below the ocean surface, 90 meters of depth inside this pressure container, 100 PSI. Look at how little the pressure has changed from outside to in the pressure tank. So 3.7 to 3.9, only 0.2 PSI. We are under tremendous force on the outside of the case. And we've only managed to, tra to change the inside pressure some 2 PSI, 0.2 PSI. And notice the pressure goes back down. The watch was cold when we put it in. It's warmed up a little bit, so I expect it to be right around 13.8 PSI, which looks like it's going to level out right around there. There you go. And to show that the watch is still waterproof, let's take it out. So we, we actually have a vacuum in here. We have a vacuum of a few PSI, of one PSI. Um, so I'm going to undo the crown, and you'll see it shoot back up to 14.4. All right, who's ready for a shower? This is my 2300 PSI gas powered pressure washer attacking the back of this poor 300 meter diver. And as some others who have seen this video pointed out to me, I'm holding that nozzle way closer than I should be to wash a car or even, I don't know, clean stuff off the driveway. So we'll take a look at the pressure readings here, and as you can see, it only goes up just a tiny amount. And as soon as I lay off the spray, it rebounds back. Now, you'll notice that the temperature and pressure uh, continue to climb, and that's because the Wi-Fi package is getting warm, um, and also because the readings of the pressure are just so small that, that the scale uh, doesn't show any giant changes. Another thing to note here is if water got past either the seal in the back or the seals by the crown, it would have dramatically changed the pressure inside the watch. Um, but it didn't. It uh, rebounded right where it was and continued to climb in the same way uh, with the temperature and pressure. You know, I was going to 
simulate dunking my arm in a tub of water and videotaping that, and I even at one point set up a video camera to videotape water from my shower hitting the face of the watch, uh, but it simply didn't even register. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, first, myth busted. Water coming out of the shower at 50 PSI, traveling three feet, hitting the crown and the side of the case directly, doesn't increase the pressure inside the watch. Flailing your arms around in three feet of water isn't going to increase the pressure inside the watch. So what's the takeaway here? Well, if your seals are bad, your watch isn't waterproof. Don't blame the shower.